Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan. And what I'd like to do today is give you all some tips and tricks on how to write a sporting goods store business plan, as well as how to create a basic profit and loss section for a sporting good business plan store. So the way the video is gonna work is first and foremost, I'm gonna give you all a little bit of background about me, just a couple minutes as to my experiences. And from there, I'll give you all some tips and tricks um, related to the company's um, company introductory section for a business plan, as well as show you all how I would create and structure a basic profit loss section for a sporting good business plan um, as well. All right, so without further ado, let's zip through this little presentation I've got designed for your listening and viewing pleasure. So first and foremost, I am a business writer, a professional business writer, specifically a business plan writer. So if y'all would like to avoid the trials and tribulations and the growth experience personally and professionally of writing your own business plan, uh, please feel free to pick up the phone, give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. Be delighted to write your sporting good business plan for you. Also, if you just need that little bit of nudge, you almost have your business plan complete, you almost have your finance projections all wrapped up, but you just need that little bit more information, I do have some books published on how to write a business plan as well as how to design and work with financial models and financial projections, pro forma financial projections. Um, so check out some of my books on Amazon. And then finally, I am an adjunct professor and subject matter expert for both business and finance. So if you do need, so if your business plan is all wrapped up and it's got a nice little bow on it and is all ready to go, the only thing that's tri tripping you up are those little numbers, um, then I'd be delighted to create your financial projections for you as well. All right, so with that said, let's talk about a sporting goods store business plan. So when I write up a sporting goods store business plan, um, I always, I'm always i always gonna start with the typical information in, in the company description section. I'm gonna introduce the company's name. I'm going to talk about what the main revenue driver is going to be, and then what a secondary revenue driver is gonna be. And then I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the you know, business legal structure, whether it's gonna be a corporation, so proprietor, um, limited liability partnership, limited liability company, whatever it's going to be. I'll, I'll get all that um, information out of the way. But once I'm done with that, I'm going to immediately dive into the the bread and butter of the, of the company. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about you know what are some of the products that you're going to be selling. Um, you know, for example, what are some differentiating factors? If your sporting goods store is going to be a generalist, and what I mean by a generalist is you're going to sell basketball equipment, football equipment, soccer equipment. Um, you're going to be selling maybe some tracks, some track uniforms. You're going to be selling sporting apparels and shoes and and cleats and all, all that kind of good stuff. If you could be more of a generalist, then I'm going to go ahead and describe that and, and state that why this is important um, to being a generalist and, and talk about some you know, business models included into that. However, if you're going to be a niche provider in a sporting goods store, if you're going to be selling st soccer equipment only or basketball equipment only, um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and identify that as your niche, and I'm gonna describe why that niche is going to, is important um, for the business. It, you might have a loyal customer following for soccer, or you might have an in with some, some of the sporting um, groups um, for the schools and some other organizations for soccer or basketball, whatever that is, however that's going to support your niche, I'm gonna describe that in the company se um, section as well. Next is going to be the business structure. Once you identify your inventory and what you're going to be selling, talk about the, in general, the business structure. Are you going to be an all, only a retail storefront or are you going to have an online section? If you do have an online section, how are you going to break up the job responsibilities? And you know, traditionally, you're going to have a salesperson on the floor, you're going to have a cashier, you're going to have a stalker. Um, but if you're going to have an online component for your sporting goods store, well, you're going to have to have a little bit of a different structure. You're, you're going to have to have people shipping and receiving, and you're going to have to have people packaging. And, you know, you're going to definitely want to be able to keep up your website. So, so you're going to have a whole other back office um, segment that's going to be going on if you've got an online segment as well. So you definitely want to address that in the company description. And then finally... The company description section, well, for every one of the business plans that I write and I ever will write, it's going to have an industry analysis where I'm going to go into in depth for the industry, you know, describe, you know, you know how the industry is doing, whether it's going to be growing, you know, you know, is there a lot of competitors in there? 
and and so on. I'm going to get I'm going to you know get some f you know facts and figures about the revenue growth and, and what the you know in total what what are the sales right now for the industry. So I'm going to get a lot of that information. However, in the company description section, I do want to work in a couple of facts and figures ab about the industry as a whole. So you know where, wherever you have that opportunity. You know, so for example, um, right now the sporting goods um, segment or sporting goods store industry is about a $65 billion industry in the U.S. that's growing at 4% annually. So I would work that in somewhere within the company description, whether it's going to be the first paragraph where I'm introducing the company or whatever is going to be going down a little bit further into the business structure. I, I do want to throw some facts and figures to... Um, you know, when you add some facts and figures to, to your sporting goods store, it shows that you've done your research and you've got credibility and you kind of want to establish that up front. So that's why I would throw that in up front. All right, next is going to be the basic profit and loss section. So this is um, by far not a pro forma financial statement by any means. But however, um, this little um, this little. Uh, Excel structure right here that I've got it broken into will let the um, will, will allow a business owner to be able to roughly estimate what their sales are going to be, what their fixed costs are, and then what are their monthly profits based on their assumptions for a variable cost, number of customers, and average customer ticket. The good thing about this is it's going to give it's, it's going to give the business owner s some kind of a tool to be able to play around with the sales prices and the number of customers that they need to get into the door in order to achieve the profits they want. Um, and once they have that broad understanding of what the variable costs need to be and how many customers they're going to they need to have, then they can go ahead and focus on how much marketing do they need to do in order to get these people in the door and so on. All right, so that is why this section right here is important. And so the way that I've got this structured um, for the sporting goods store is going to be first up here is going to be your revenue generator. So how much money you'll be making on a daily or monthly basis. The next section is going to be your monthly fixed cost. And then the third section is going to be your monthly profits. So the way that I've got the revenue section set up is that we are going to be averaging or estimating what is the average ticket a customer is going to spend ballpark or you would like them to spend when they walk into your store. For this example, it's $70. Next is going to be the variable cost. You know, how much of a variable cost are you anticipating? Is it going to be 50%? Is it going to be 60%? And the variable cost is how much does it cost you to, you know, buy a soccer ball in order to be able to sell it. So if you're going to sell a soccer ball, that's going to be your sales price. How much did it cost you to buy the soccer ball? Well, that's going to be your variable cost. So for this right here, we're at what about 55% variable cost on estimate. And then to get the gross profit, you're going to back out your variable cost from your sales price. The next section right here is going to be the number of customers. How many customers do you need to get in the door or do you expect to get in the door day one? So whatever the expectation is, you're going to put it right here. And then once you have that, you're going to multiply the number of customers by the gross profit and it's going to give you your total gross profit. Next section is going to be multiply it by the days in the month. So how many days are you going to be open? If you're going to be open seven days, then use about a 30 day um, estimate. If you're going to be closed on Sundays, then maybe about 26 days would be good. Um, so what you're going to do next is going to multiply your total gross profits by your days open. And that's going to give you monthly gross profits of about 26,250 based on this scenario. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to identify your fixed cost. How much money are you going to be dropping every month for your for whatever loans you have out, supplies, labor, lease, utilities, marketing, accounting, legal, insurance, and miscellaneous. So whatever your monthly fixed costs are going to be, add them all up right here and the total them at the bottom. The next section, the third section, the monthly profits, what you're going to do is you're going to first you're going to tie in or you're going to bring this number down to 26,250. You're going to put it right here for the monthly growth profits. Then you're going to go ahead and pull down your monthly fixed cost and you're going to put it right here. And the net final step is going to be you're going to deduct that 13,350, which is your monthly cost from the estimated growth profits, which gives you a net profit of $12,900. So What's a great thing about this right here, once you have this model set up, is now you can change the sales price for average ticket sales price, or you can change the number of customers, or you can change the days in the week, or you can change your variable costs or your monthly fixed costs. And when you make those changes, you're going to be able to see how that's going to impact your net profits. And from there, you can go ahead and set your, your sale price strategies and your marketing strategies and all other kind of good strategies. Um, that need to be done and also this gives you a good foundation to create a um, 
you know, real solid pro, pro forma financial projection. All right. So hopefully these couple tips were helpful. Um, so in summary, when you're writing up your business plan, make sure that you, um, you use a, a proven format. Um, if you're going to do it yourself, um, you know, it's actually almost sometimes better to start from scratch than to use an SBA website um, because there are templates out there that are very general templates, um, but those templates are going to be used for sporting goods stores and restaurants and manufacturers and painters and musicians and all these other businesses. Um, they got some very general templates out there that can be quite confusing. It's almost better to start from scratch if you're going to use a generalist template. Um, but um, if, if you're going to go ahead and write up a sporting goods store um, business plan and you need a, a template that's designed for sporting goods stores, um, check out my website, um, qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash sporting goods store business plan template. I, I do have a template there that is specifically designed for a sporting goods store. Also, keep the store of the show as the business. I, you know, a lot of people when they're starting a sporting goods store, they might have been a former professional athlete. Um, or, you know, they've got significant experience in the sporting goods industry and that is all well and good. And, and it's, it's an excellent, um, ability to have, and, um, it is a, is a great, um, foundation to build upon, but all too often I find that business owners tend to talk about themselves more in their business plan than they actually do the business. And that's counterproductive. So make sure to keep the start of the show as the business. And then finally, contact me for help. If you need some help writing a business plan, let me know. If you need some help with the financial projections, let me know. If you need a good sporting goods store template for the business plan, again, let me know. I love to assist. All right. And so um, if y'all do want some more information, I do have some information on my website. So if you go to qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash how to write a sporting goods store business plan, I do have some more thoughts and ideas as to um, how you can go ahead and write up a real solid sporting goods or business plan. All right, so hopefully this information was helpful. And as always, um, give me a thumbs up on YouTube and have a great day. Thank you.